What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a title called Four Tales and doing some light impressions work. This is a game that the best way, I went ahead and I played it for a little while prior to the recording of this video. And the best way that I know how to describe it to, like the closest game that I can compare it to is Cultus Simulator, in fact. And we live in a world where Cultus Simulator is one of my favorite games. And so this game and I were almost instantaneously friends. Uh, this is a card game, but it's not really like a deck building card game as far as I've seen so far. The cards are really just the mechanism by which you interact with the game. Like it's a card game as much as Cultus Simulator is a card game. In that like objects and things and weapons and characters and locations and all of those various sort of conceptualized ideas they exist on cards, and the entire game is about you playing a card on another card. So you might have a card that lets you steal, or you might have a companion that steals, or something like that. You may have another location card that's like a marketplace. And much like playing Stacklands or Cultist Simulator, this game is basically about figuring out all the weird little interactions between all of the locations and objects and emotions and supporting characters and inventory items that you have in your hand in order to accomplish a goal. And the game has a narrative that follows along as you complete those quests and it's set in a very, very well animated sort of Disney Robin Hood inspired, uh, I guess anthropomorphic animal medieval world. But don't let the cartooniness like concern you, this game is actually quite violent. Like, this, this is a game where, like, it keeps track of how many people you've murdered, and, like, you have, like, a crime score. Like, your characters in this game are very much outlaws straight from the beginning of the game, and one of the ways you can deal with people that want to catch you is just by flatly murdering them in a big street brawl if you want to. And so anyways, we're going to dive on into Four Tales today, and we're going to take a look at it for about 25-30 minutes. See if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. This one's got me infatuated pretty quickly, so I think you guys are going to like it too. The link is down below in the description if you wanted to check that out. And then on top of it, we've also got a link to the Discord and the Twitch stream, just in case you wanted to hang out live. Pretty strong chance at some point this week, I will also be playing this game. I know I've been saying that a lot, but honestly, there's been like a massive drought of games that I want to play for like four hours straight for the stream and this week has been an absolute deluge that has countered that overall dryness and so anyways I'm trying to just like fill in daily slots with stuff that's gonna be super fun to play for long binge sessions and this game is definitely on the list four tails let's go we're gonna start a new save over here and we're gonna get it moving and so we have a mysterious patron Volpane needs money to help his father and the local miners his friend Leo says that there is someone in town that has a lucrative job offer. So this is the game right here. I'm actually going to skip a lot of these random interactions and things. Oh, this is our ticket, Volpane, to a payday. One last job and our days of stealing apples from the market are going to be behind us. That's what you said last time. Who's this contact of yours? His name's Timothy. He says that he has work for people like us. And you're sure he can pay because I could really do with some money right now. Don't worry, he promised a hefty reward. Uh, it should be more than enough to help your father and the miners with the strike. And for me to take an early retirement. He's just a little difficult to track down in town sometimes. Well, we better ask around then. It looks like a good place to start. Uh, the game does have a narrator, a la Darkest Dungeon, or something like Goblin Stone, just in case you've seen those games. Uh, something just add a little bit more levity and, I guess, whimsy to the game and kind of, like, dial up the colorful brightness of it as you're doing awful things. Uh, good day to you, young bird. How can I be of assistance? We're looking for somebody by the name of Timothy. I see. Secretive fellow. Uh, I think I heard something about him the other day, but sadly, my memory just isn't what it once was. Right, and what's going to jog your memory? A bite to eat usually does the trick. About five food should be sufficient. Five? That's enough for a couple of days. Ignore my friend here. We'll come back with some food for you. Uh, we have one food, so four food left to go. All right, so basically the way that this works is that you have locations. These are at the center of the board. You have actions. These are basically class abilities or character abilities that each of these guys can use. And so, for example, on Leo right here, we've got... Sur he's a tiger named Leo. Curious. Anyways, uh, he's got survivor sense. It says that there's food everywhere if you know where to look. Like, these cards are usually pretty cryptic. They don't tell you exactly what they do, but you can infer what they do from kind of like the description. This is basically he's going to go into a location and he's going to use his ability to survive to conjure something out of that area. Over here on the right, we have our possessions, uh, our possessions and kind of our reputation. And so 
We've got our money, so we've got two gold right now. We've got one food. Uh, we've got one fame. People don't really know who we are, but you can trade in fame as a currency to get certain things and to get favors out of people. Uh, we've also got Grim. Uh, Grim is basically your ability to intimidate people based on your reputation alone. So every time you kill somebody, you're gonna get grim. Every time you rob somebody and are seen, you're gonna get grim. Every time you outrun the cops, you're gonna get grim. And there are cops in this game. There will be people looking for you as you do more and more criminal activities. And so anyways, basically you've got bully, you've got bribe, and you've got beg is basically the way that I think about it. Although begging with your fame is kind of different, but like... I, I think of it as the three B's and then food you can also use as a currency you can give it to like beggars to get fame and stuff like that And uh, so anyways these cards will have other uses outside of combat and inside of combat One of the fun things about the game is the way contextually that the things you have on you change what they do based on the situation You're in but for right now we have a marketplace and we have an apple merchant now We do have a stealing card right here nimble hands we could steal three food from the apple merchant you can only play one card on each of these locations and then it goes back in the deck and it draws a new location uh, from the city deck that you are currently in. So I'm gonna do that. Let's steal some food from the merchant. Smooth, he didn't notice a thing. And so there it is. We've got the vast majority of the food that we're gonna need in order to pay this guy off to get the item that he has to help find Timothy. Uh, but anyways. Skip all these tutorials right here. Oh, we got another thieving card. Nice. Uh, every time you use a card, it's discarded. You don't have it anymore until the characters sleep. You will occasionally find areas in the map where you can, like, trade in food or you can trade in money to rest. That will refresh your deck. Uh, running out of your deck is a bad idea, although I've never run one down to driblets before just to see what's going to happen. But I, I assume it's not great. Uh, over here, it looks like we can steal. What's this new location right here? The poor district. Okay. Uh, we can be on the scent in the poor district. What's that going to do? It moves us to a noisy tavern in both cases. Okay. Uh, if we fire an arrow, that's just going to rotate the card. It looks like we can create, we can blow pepper in people's faces. We can play Solidarity of the Week, which is where we offer aid to a poor person in one of these areas. Let's do that. Ahoy there, scamps. What do you want, mister? Well, I'm, I'm offering to help you. Hey, kid, shouldn't you be in school or something? Wait a minute, maybe I can help you. And so there you go, we now have an ally. Like, not only does equipment go inside this lower right pile, you actually get characters and things too that as you offer them aid, like, it doesn't really give you a lot of specifics about what you did to help this kid, but for whatever reason, us just stopping to talk with him and being who we are, kind of the Robin Hood-like rogues that we are, he decided to join up with us, and he can lend us aid. So, for example, we can send him into the market to steal for us, or if we're in a fight, we can put him behind us, and he'll throw rocks at the enemy while we duke it out in melee and deal extra damage or we can put him in front of us as a sacrificial shield to be murdered by brigands uh, there's all kinds of things that you can do with small children in a medieval world uh, but anyways I'm actually gonna use him right now to steal from the market so there we go uh, he has paid us all right I think we've got enough now let's see what this guy knows lead the way all right so we're gonna take some food over here and we are going to try oh we've got a hostile token so this is a location where there's a fight Basically, these are footpads. This might be the guards. This could really be anything or anyone that really wants to do us harm. Uh, these are bandits, though, and they're going to try to prey upon us. Now, some cards will allow you to get rid of them. Some cards will not, uh, and you've just got to kind of, like, deal with them as it goes. However, you do get fame for taking out bandits, so sometimes it's worth it. You can also sometimes get grim for taking out bandits. And so, anyways, we're going to have to clear that channel because until we get rid of the bandits... Uh, this will not draw a new location card, uh, and so we're, we're going to have to take the fight, or we're going to have to find a way around it. Otherwise, this isn't going to go away. Uh, there is an old well. It looks like if we play this right here, we could get some food, and we could get some fame. It looks like we could get some food, and it would take us to a tavern. We've also got eavesdropping, which will give us food. We've got stealing, which will give us food and a gold. I think that's probably not a bad idea. Let's go ahead and do that. Looks like a good spot to refill the canteens. I do like the little contextual things that the guys say that kind of give them a little bit of character as you're playing various activities. Like I said, this is basically Cultist Simulator or Stacklands by like a different 
presentation style. Uh, it's not necessarily like a deck building card game. It's kind of a narrative game. Almost a board game, really. Uh, at least one of your adventures is down to the last few skill cards. Maybe you can use the rest deck to recover some. Since rest cards will give skill cards back to all adventures, sometimes it's a good idea to use actions from all your adventurers and not just one. If you spread the effort between them, they won't have to rest as often. Let's go ahead and give him his food. Thank you, young bird. Now about this Timothy chap. Of course, where are my manners? Here, you'll follow this path. And so he's that given us a trail away. that leads to uh, Timothy. Nice, so that we can end the miner strike. Thanks for the tip, friend. A good day to you, bird. What now? I suppose we should probably follow the old beggar's directions on that piece of paper. Sometimes you'll have to seek directions to progress the story and reach new destinations. Check the descriptions of cards. Yeah, so we've got this piece of paper right here, uh, which will tell us where we're supposed to go. More than likely what'll happen is it'll take like an open marketplace or city tile and it will turn it into the story effect that we need. Uh, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to eavesdrop for a minute inside the tavern. That's interesting. Sounds like there's a private room that's underneath the tavern. Ah, we've got a bladesmith over here. So we can steal from him. That will add four creatures to the search party, though. That's bad. So the search party is this right here. Uh, basically, the search party is a deck full of enemies that slowly fills up as you do criminal stuff or as you beef with other criminals. Uh, I've had, like, mobsters looking for me. I've had the palace guards looking for me. Basically, anybody that's looking for you goes into this deck, and if you do certain things on certain locations, like you create a ruckus or you are not clandestine enough, it will draw off the top the number of cards that's designated, and you have to fight them right now. It means they have found you, they have tracked you down, they are trying to claim your bounty, or they are trying to get revenge on you, or whatever else, but that's the search deck up here in the top left. We can get food from him. Looks like we can go back to the tavern. We can just dispose of the card. What if I give him money? The Bladesmith Squad. Ooh, I lose fame, though. That's probably not great. Maybe I do something in the market that gives me fame. Let's keep that card up for a minute, and we'll play the map over here. A heavily bandaged figure stands alone in the alleyway and looks like he's waiting for someone. As Volpane and Leo approach, the figure turns to greet them. Ah, Leo, so you're finally here and you brought a crow. I'm a shoe bill. But of course you are. Uh, we heard you have work. Do I ever. But before we get down to brass tacks, I always like to get an understanding of who it is that I'm working with. What do you mean? I'd like a demonstration of the value that you're going to bring to the operation. Demonstration? Yes, you know skills, my boys. Show me your skills. The pair look at each other perplexed. What do you mean skills? Skills in combat, sleight of hand, good old trick shot from Leo? I suppose that I could just do the trick shot. In one seamless motion, Leo pulls out a bow and lets an arrow fly straight at the leper. Timothy feels a whoosh of air as the hat flies off of his head. By the time he's turned around, it's pinned to a tree. How's that for a demonstration? A little dramatic, but a fine shot nonetheless. Timothy turns around and picks up his hat and places it back on his head. Well, I've certainly seen enough to pique my interest. Then perhaps you could tell us what it is that you need. I would like for the two of you to acquire an item for me. A very rare and beautiful liar that's currently in the possession of Lady Cattell. You mean that old bat who lives on the hill? I wouldn't call her that to her face, but yes, that's her. Uh, I'd like you to break into the manor, steal the liar, and then bring it to me at the Holy Grove. The Holy Grove? I know the place well. I could get you there myself, Volpane. Excellent, then I shall leave you to it. All right, we got a job to do at long last. We can get straight to it if you think we're ready to go, or we could spend some more time on the streets to prep. It's your call. Actually, how's about a small nap before we set off? You read my mind. I'm pretty sure the rest card costs food, if I remember correctly. Something tells me these oh boy, we got banditos everywhere. Techniques. I would say we should probably resolve the bandito fights before we go do anything else. Unfortunately, what does Rallying Cry do right here? The usual suspects. What? At least you have their attention. 
Uh, are these guys, like, can I hire them? Oh, I can hire a thug. That's probably a good idea because I think we're about to live that thug life and, like, take out some enemies. I will... What does that mean? Discard two random creatures from the bandit faction and with max level five. Huh. I wonder if that gets rid of some of these guys over here. I don't know. Isn't the anime... Like, look at the illustrations on these cards. Just absolutely fantastical. I dearly hope that we end up getting more from whoever the illustrator is of this game. I want to see more of your art in gaming. Like, it is utterly intoxicating. It's great. Like, at the same time, it's clearly influenced by, like, old Disney movies. But simultaneously, it's got a little bit more edge to it. Like, it really, really pops and stands on its own two feet. Like, in the in the respect, you can tell kind of where the inspiration came from. But on top of that, like, you know, it, it's got its own vibe to it. And I like it. What does he do? I can get a lockpick and a throwing knife. Sure. This will come in handy. All right, so we've got a throwing knife. Sharp, balanced, deadly, you get the point. Can I throw it at them? No, I can't throw it at them. And then the lockpick is going to be, like, getting into stuff. That much is obvious. I probably should have taken the thug so I could park them out in front. But let's go ahead and engage these enemies right here. So combat in this game. Perhaps combat is sort of an interesting process. Uh, so basically, we have to decide whether or not we want to play supplementary cards over here. Or... Do we want to just engage and attack? And when you're ready and you've made that decision, you just click on this button right here and you will start fighting. But for right now, uh, what I would like to do is stun all three of these guys with a pepper spray. There we go. We'll blow pepper in their eyes. Perfect. An enemy was just removed from the confrontation. This will subtract its level from the enemy's morale. Their level is in the top left of the card. And so anyways... Uh, that guy decided to run away, but he will try to get revenge on us later. So he's now in the search deck. So he's going to run away, and he's going to decide that he can't handle the disrespect, and he's going to try to attack us. The good news is we basically nerfed everybody else's attack for that engagement right there. And so anyways, the enemies have... Hold on, let me get all these tutorials out of the way. The enemies have their health, their damage, and their level. When you take somebody out, you subtract their level from the enemy's morale. When enemy morale hits zero, all enemies are removed and they go into the search deck. Whenever you kill somebody, you get fame or you get menace, and that's by reducing their HP down to zero. We're going to want to blow pepper spray again before this engagement, I think. Yeah. We're going to want pepper spray before the engagement, and then... I sort of wish that I could boost up my attack a little bit more, but I guess that's life. I don't think there's too much more that I can do here. Now, when this guy dies, it should bottom out their morale. There we go. We got ourselves some menace. And now that their morale is at zero, this kitty cat over here is going to take off and run, and we get the reward for the fight, which was one fame. And we are now in the back alley again. I think... Before we rest, let's go ahead and holler over here. Would you look at that? Over here! And so we've now summoned a crowd. Uh, we can either steal from the crowd, we can beg from the crowd, we can do all kinds of stuff from the crowd right now. Or we can learn some local chit-chat, or we can learn a nasty little secret. Can I do anything with money? Oh, I can give money away to the poor, and I can get a whole bunch of uh, fame. Or I can rob the poor. Oh, maybe it doesn't rob them. Maybe it turns them into rioters? Let's find out. Are you going to keep letting the militia walk all over you, or are you going to fight back? Oh, yeah, dude, we turned them into rioters. Okay, and so now I, like, I pay them florins or whatever. And now they join my team. Finally, a bit of action. Let's go. Nice, dude. Okay, we don't have too many abilities left. Oh, one of the search party guys found us. Uh, let's go ahead and rest for a minute. There we go. We've restored our draw decks a little bit so that we can keep on going. Don't expect it to be that easy all the time. The next... Oh, it's going to cost us food. Yeah, I figured. All right.
Well, I will move on, but I want to keep fighting with Like, I wanted to clear the whole stack. Well, here. Let me see if I can beg for food or something around here anywhere. Looks like I can rob for food, so let's go ahead and rob for food real quick, because I don't want to go to the next map without, like, some goodies. But it looks like we're done, so let's move on to the next map and see how far it takes us. Somewhere in the garden, Leo has brought Volpain to the city gardens where food is plentiful and secrets lurk around every corner. Deep in the labyrinth lies our hero's destination for the evening, Lady Cattell's Manor. Watch out, guards. There are now several hostile creatures in the search party. This represents animals that are chasing your party. Every time a new location card appears on the board, if it has a search party token, it may spawn a group of enemies from the search party. Actions may also cause this. All right. Right then. Timothy said the instruments inside Lady Cattell's Manor. The big house with the labyrinth? That's the one, but getting through the hedge maze is going to be tough. I think I saw some gardeners wandering around earlier. Maybe they'd know the way through. Oh, now you're in for it. Yes, we are. How to? Oh, wow, they filled in both spots. Not great. Not fantastic. Can we, like, bribe the guards to go away? Doesn't look like I have anything playable right now. So, Lady Cattell's Manor is surrounded by a bewildering labyrinth full of wrong turns and dead ends. It's impossible to navigate without directions. This is the gardener. He knows the garden's like the back of his hand, and if you're polite, he'll show you where the best apples are. Okay. Do I have anything I can kind of, like, use here? We can eavesdrop on him. That might help. Or I figure we can probably just bribe him, right? What does bribing give us? We get the gardener. He becomes a party member. Okay. That right there gives me the gardener as well. We'll go ahead and bribe him. All we need to do now is lead the gardener to the labyrinth, and the rest should work out. A fine spot for looting. Wow, the search party's all over us right now. There has to be a way in. That's just like a level one guy, though. I think we can take him. Like, I'm not too concerned. Like he's. Look at him, dude. He doesn't exactly look like he's gonna open up a can on us. You know what I mean? Like that just moves him back to the other deck, though. So I think we just fight him. Tell my mother I. Okay, so there you go. We've we've murdered a medieval guard, and that gave us some some menace. And now our search deck is empty, so that at least we have two location cards to play around with. Look, I can see documents in the glass. Think they'll be useful? Only one way to find out. Let me see what I can do with this lockpick. So is that like a locked door? The locked greenhouse. Okay, we did get the lockpick, so that's good. This looks like a map of the labyrinth, but look, it's only the inner part of the maze. Why can't anything be simple? It's better than nothing. I'm sure we can find something to show us our way into the middle. Or someone. And what is this right here? The Winter Garden. The perfect place to relax with a book. Sadly, Volpan doesn't have much time, or Volpane doesn't have much time for reading these days. Uh, can we sniff? Oh, there's cards. We get a healing balm and healing plants. Yeah, that sounds great. That sounds yes, like the kind of thing that might be helpful. And then over here, I bet we can do survival. Oh, that takes us to a locked greenhouse again. Okay. It looks like we can steal from there, too, if we want to. What does that one do? Food and fame. We're shooting apples like William Tell. Gotcha. Doesn't look like I can snipe the guards or anything. Although it does say a well shot or a deadly shot in combat can take out enemies from a distance without raising an alarm. How tough are these guards? They just deal one damage, but they've got a little bit more health. I guess it would kind of depend if we can take this guy out first so that it routes this guy's morale. I mean, we're fairly well stocked up on resources, so there may be no point in, like, beefing with people that we don't have to. All right, let's head into the garden. We have an appointment with the lady of the house. Would you show us through the maze? I've trimmed these hedges many a time. Follow me! That's quite a statue. What? What is it? Sorry, sirs. I'd rather not go any further. What? You're serious? We're barely halfway! This is this statue, sir. It's bad luck. Haunted. The gardener backs away from the statue nervously, leaving Volpane and Leo alone. 
I had to admit, it was a foreboding sight. Great. I think I hear a guard patrol coming. Quick, hide! If the guards wanted a fight, they were going to get one. Patrol takes up position right in front of the statue. Patrols we can deal with, but how are we going to find our way through the rest of the labyrinth? We found that map, right? That should help us figure out the best route. Yeah! Let's take a look once we've dealt with the watch. Uh, the game does have a hint system. If you don't know what card to use where, entirely possible that you can use the hints in order to get to where you want to go. It'll tell you whether or not you have anything workable inside your hand right now. So on and so forth. I don't see a whole lot of ways that we're going to deal with this patrol right here. So I think we just go for it, man. Like, I, I don't see anything that interacts. And we, we do have a rioter that we can park in front of one of our guys to keep him safe, I think. So yeah, maybe that's what we'll do. We'll just take this. Definitely some nastiness going on, though. Uh, one of the hostiles you're facing has a special power. Yes, indeed. It's this dog right here. Add a constable to the search party every single round. Pretty brutal stuff. Pretty rough. Uh, I would like to put in my rioter. Right there. I would like to <laughs> blow dirt in their faces to lower their attack power. And that actually made two of them retreat, which is fantastic. Uh, a little bit of damage off right there. Took a little bit of damage right there, which kind of sucks, but that's life. Uh, we can deal three damage. Let's go ahead and kill him off before the search party gets any larger. There we go. He's dead. I don't want the search party to get any larger and nastier. A uh, little bit more menace to play around with. It looks like for minus four menace, we can make them run away, or we can bribe them to run away. Okay. That'll raise his attack up, but I don't think that he needs it. Yeah, I don't think there's too much that we need to do here. I could heal my rioter. We've got enough healing plants. Let's do it. There goes another one right there. And he had money in his pocket. Nice. And that kind of leaves us to this fight over here. Okay. We've got directions. What are we waiting for? Let's go. All right. Let's go rob this thing, man. If I'm reading this right, we should be there in no time. Good thing, too. It's almost nighttime. Perfect timing. The darker, the better. That's Lady Cattell's manor. Yes, it is. Finally. Hey, maybe that was the hard part, and it's all downhill from here? Wishful thinking. It's getting dark. Let's get down to business. Hold on a second. This might be our last chance to rest. I need my nimble hands at the ready. Uh, I have your nimble hands, so we don't need to rest. Uh, resting is unnecessary. Let's just go ahead and steal from the place. Let's do this. Do what you do best. I'll cover the exit. Under the cover of night, Volpane... Ghosted into the manor, undetected, darts through the corridors until he reaches the main hall, and there in plain sight stands the liar in all of its splendor, glinting in the moonlight. All he had to do was reach out and take it. The second he touched the mysterious liar, Volpan felt an ancient power flowing through him. Reality fractured and exploded into an infinite number of worlds, all identical and yet somehow distinct. Beyond the webs of fate, he witnessed all possible futures resonating, vibrating, clashing. Then he saw, and he knew. He, his loved ones, his city, his kingdom, his world. Everything was going to disappear, swallowed up by a cataclysm whose origin lurked behind the veil of possibilities. That seems like a really great place to break off the video. My name is Splattercat. I'm sorry I mispronounced Volpane's name, Volpan's name the entire video. This is what it is. Never seen that name in my life. No clue. It had an A and an I in it. In English, that's an ain sound, but like apparently it's 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 Volp it's like Volpan, I guess, is the way that you pronounce it and wherever its origin is. So I learned a thing today. But this is four tales. I think the game is a fantastic idea. 
I've been long awaiting more things that are like Cultist Simulator or like Stacklands, where they're games about playing tiles and playing cards and figuring out what you want to do next. Uh, I like that. And frankly, I'm stoked for like any game that isn't really just kind of like a Slay the Spire clone. I, I am pleased. I am happy. You should check this game out. I will see you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet, but for now, it's time for me to go. Thank you for spending the luxury of your time with me, and I'll catch you all later. Bye, everybody.